Okay, I'm back with another Cataphracty Terminator and the one that I'm going to approach this time is one with twin lightning claws. Um, it's down in the instruction as Cataphracty Terminator 1 but as I went through in the last video doing the Sergeant there is a lot of flexibility in these so you can use any set of legs with any body combination and the arms are also very versatile. You can pretty much use whichever combination of arms you want on these as well. So, starting off with this one, I'm going to actually use um, 15, 16 and 17. And it's the ones that I've basically done in purple across the sprue to make it easier for me to find them as I do this video. So, <clears throat> start off, get my... 15, 16, and 17, the main leg part. Then we have leg 16 and the kind of the little, I don't even know what that's technically called. I'm going to have to look that up, whatever this thing is called. Seventeen. I'd love if someone could put in the comments what that thing is called. <laughs> I'm sure it has a name. Um, I want to call it the loin cloth, although that's probably what it is. Now, a good thing about the Terminator Squad is you can do a nice combination of Lightning Claws and other weaponry. Uh, I'm, I'm really one of those people that if I do a squad, I want them all to be kind of similarly armed. Otherwise, half the unit is kind of sitting back useless while you're moving to get into combat. So, obviously, I would... Do the entire squad lightning claws or ranged weaponry. But in this case, I'm going to show obviously one of each kind, one of each weapon combination that I think you can have. Although the kit is, as I said, nicely versatile and you can add an awful lot of details and, you know, just really make a wonderful combination of body, leg and weapon systems and obviously you can buy additional weapons for them which I like the idea of but one thing that I like about these terminators is they can all look quite unique so if you do them right they can all be quite individually individual okay so that little line cloth here is kind of sits in like with the other one you've got to kind of put a bit of pressure to get it to sit all the way in properly so it does slide inwards but obviously it should do out a tiny bit it shouldn't uh, be completely plush to the belt okay and now to pick the body combination so all of the back parts are numbered seven. I've got my one that I've numbered up ready over here, painted up as purple, but all the back plates are all number seven. And then I've chosen this one here to actually be the front. You do get six potential combinations of these front pieces, which is good. Again, it just gives you a bit of slight bit more variation and if you really wanted to you could play around and maybe buy some special legion molded bodies or if you really felt brave enough you could even convert some and make them look or if you're really really brave and you're really really skilled at making 3d parts make them yourself and 3d print them now Obviously, with the Imperial Fists, I do think 
you can get away with just bog standard everything and it works um with the legions as i said i always go back to the night lords you could obviously head towards the uh now my pronunciation of this is complete guesswork i think it's the atramar the someone's going to correct me about that very quickly and say that's not it but <laughs> um yeah the the terminators of the night lords the conrad Kurz's own personal retinue it says on personal retinue but the guy just went off and did his own thing quite often anyway regardless of where his troops were There's our body nicely put together. Then obviously you've got to think about positioning over here. So again, this one's quite, um, depending on which way you look at it, it could look like it's kind of quite forward, but there is a slight forward step. So having the body face directly forward or at a slight angle is okay. I wouldn't point it over this way because I just feel like it doesn't match the leg positioning. So either straight forward or a slight angle. So he's looking slightly towards his leg. And then over here, I've decided to go with this helmet. Number nine. And think about your head position and which way you want him to go. So I want him slightly inclined looking down the direction of his leg. Okay, and I think next thing I want is his <clears throat> weapons to go on. So we're looking at basically any combination of left and right power claw will do nicely on this one and it doesn't really matter so i'm going for 35 and 34 i do love a good lightning claw they look absolutely fierce you know full well that no matter what you put them into combat with they're just going to rip through it and rip it to pieces aren't they Again, I think the problem is with having a someone with lightning claws in a squad all filled with guns is that he's going to basically be sitting around doing nothing. And so I think my long term aim is that I would create one squad fully armed up with lightning claws and one squad... Oh, pop on there. One squad armed with ranged weapons. Right, I think. See, this is the only thing about these power claws. If you look at them carefully, you've got to think about positioning. So, if you look at the tassels on the arm, you want them to feel like they're falling that into a natural place. And the other thing is, you need to make sure that. Those two parts there line up properly as well. So that is one thing about a pair of lightning. Uh, these kind of arms that if you 
position them all over the place the, the the tassels are not going to be following gravity and that's going to just look a bit odd Now, again, I'm noticing on these that they have like an indent and it just feels very strange that the actual models don't have a peg to sit them on. Oh, my glue's dried up there. I always keep tissue nearby just in case it comes out too fast and need to tidy it up quick. There we go. Right. So yeah, again with this lightning claw, I'm gonna fit it, but I'm also gonna try my best to sort of go with gravity on the actual tassels so that they sit down nicely. And there we go, he, and the pose does actually work rather well. He does look like his arms are in the right place because of that. Okay. While they're gluing uh, and drying up, I'm going to obviously now look for my shoulder pads. So as I said last time, there's a couple of bit of odd things with these shoulder pads. So you've got to find the small ones first. So a number 60 and a number 61. So I've got a 60 here, and the 60s go to the right, I think it is. Yeah, 60s sit on the right of the model. So I'll start tidying that up and glue it on. side with a little bit of a lip and then we can see here it kind of sits on it should feel like it naturally fits over you can see here you would want to make sure that the top of those tassels are covered and that's a good fit and then I get myself the 61 from over here should feel like it sits quite naturally on the curve of the arm. And then obviously now the upper shoulder guards, so 62 and 63. Starting with 62 that goes on the right.
again that just kind of should naturally sit on top of that one And then over here we've got a 63. Just looking at that one there, whether or not I want it to be a bit, just getting it lined up exactly where I want it to be so that it feels like it fits right. Because I feel like if you if you aim to kind of line up there, it's probably hard to see. It'll line up on almost perfectly on the front as well, but then it looks a bit too far over. So I think the best thing to do is obviously just gently move them and see if they feel like they fit right. So doing it that way, it feels like it, it lines up exactly as it should do, but also by the same logic, it, it also looks like they're a bit too far forward on the back. So... I suppose it's just about playing around a little bit and finding where you're happy with them sitting, really. Said so on that side, it looks quite all right. It doesn't look too far, but on this one, it looks really far back. No, I think I'll leave it like that. I think I'm happy with it being there. Okay. Then I think all we need to do then is find one of the little emblem shields, uh, which on this one, I've decided to go for this one over here, which is 64. such fiddly little bits. Okay. It's got to decide which side. So you can put it on either side, really. It's entirely up to you which side of the model you want to put this on. Um, I need my tweezers to hold this as a... Move it in. Now... <laughs> I think what I need to do is I need to sit it in to begin with. I find these little things very strange in their positioning because it's not clear on the instructions whether or not you really want to get them like a bit deeper in. Because they look like they should kind of cover just a little bit over the top of here. But then when you look at them on the actual... Yeah, if you look at them on the actual diagram, they feel like they're supposed to kind of be, I don't know, more towards the torso. 
I find that they just sit a bit better right there. And that's where I'm going to go for, basically. That's where I feel like I'm happy with them going. Okay, and there we go. There is Cataphracty Terminator with lovely lightning claws. All done.